Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Q&A session where we interview professionals in the mining industry to get an idea of what careers and opportunities are out there. My name is Mario Munoz, and I'm the Recruitment Outreach Coordinator for the Lowell Institute for Mineral Resources. And our guest today is Ronell Capis, who works at Newmont's Global Flotation Operations as a subject matter expert, as well as process engineering and development support for green and brownfield studies. She has a Bachelor's of Chemical Engineering and a PhD in Metallurgical Engineering, uh, Mineral Processing Focus. And she has been with Newmont for 17 years in a variety of roles, including a Senior Metallurgist with the Process Development Laboratory Metallurgy Team um, to being a Lab Director. Uh, welcome to our uh, interview and uh, thank you for being here. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. So let's start off with uh, your work. What exactly do you do? So um, in my um, current role, I basically figure out the best and most economic way that we can extract the metal values um, from a specific ore. Um, there's often lots of different ways that you can recover the metals um, that, we, that we're interested in, but we are tasked with finding the method that works the most efficiently for all the different ores that may be present in an ore body. Um, some of the other things that I do is I um, review plant operations by analyzing data and talking to people and observing how the operation is being run. And then I make the recommendations to the site team um, on ways that they might be able to make their process more efficient. And uh, can you describe a typical work day for us? Um, well, it really depends on the day. So not, not every day, every day is a little bit different. Um, and it really depends on, you know, what the priorities for the company is. Um, so right now I'm actually working on analyzing uh, data from a study and in this study, we're looking at making a change to the existing plant. And so I'm making sure that we're doing the right taste work and the right analysis so we can do um, the economic assessment on whether this is a good investment for the company. Um, the data has to be analyzed critically and I'm working on building models to actually relate what we've tasted in the lab um, to what the plant performance will be. And so that's what I'm working on right now. But for example, last week, I actually um, was on site in, at our laboratory and um, we were trialing a new process on a kind of a pilot scale. So um, in that case, the work is a little bit more hands-on and you're out there, you know, operating a small pilot plant and making sure that we're doing all the right work. So how did you first become interested in the field? So, um, um, as you mentioned earlier, um, when I was doing my uh, chemical engineer and chemical engineering degree in, in South Africa, actually I had to take it's, it was a mandatory mineral processing class because a, a large portion of the GDP for South Africa is is mineral processing based. So even chemical engineers had to take mineral processing classes, and I really loved how the physical aspects of minerals added to the complexity of processing. And then in my uh, final year, I had a project um, which uh, involved flotation. And flotation is a process where we use bubbles to recover minerals. And then I was just, that was just, a, for me, the most neatest thing that I've ever seen, the coolest separation process, using bubbles to, to make a separation. So after that, I was hooked in, in mineral processing and flotation. For sure, for sure. It's a, it's a really neat process. And so, um, could you share with us a unique experience that you've been a part of with this career? So um, one of the things that I, I still think about is one of the coolest things um, that I've ever experienced is um, I traveled to um, one of uh, my company's mine sites in Indonesia. And to get to this mine site, um, you had to go by a seaplane. So actually, you know, I traveled there several times and I got to land in over on it with a seaplane and that's not an experience I think everybody gets so that was pretty neat um, and then I've, to, I've traveled everywhere um, uh, of course Indonesia, Africa, South America, Australia, Canada and you know got to see really really hot temperatures like in Ghana it's like 100 degrees and really humid and then my last trip to um, Canada kind of up north was minus 40 degrees Celsius so really really cold so um, just the, 
just the range of different um, weathers and climates and people and places is just really I think it's it's unique to the the mining industry um, to have so many. You always go places where not a lot of people will ever go. And uh, what professional organizations related to the industry are you a part of? And and I guess what have you um, been able to to learn and grow from them? So um, I'm very involved in the in SME, which is a Society for Mining Metallurgy and Exploration. And um, right now I'm actually on the Mineral Processing Division Executive Committee. Um, I'm also a section editor for Metallurgical Processing for the SME Journal. So I do some uh, editorial work there. And then I'm um, a qualified um, professional or competent person through the Mining and Metallurgical Society um, of America. Um, And I I think I couldn't stress how important it is to be part of um, your industry by working with these professional societies. They not only create opportunities for you to uh, learn through conferences, journals, and and so forth, but they um, are the most amazing networking opportunities. Um, So many people that you meet, um, um, just even by volunteering, you'll meet other people as well. So I I couldn't stress the importance of being involved in in such a professional society um, anymore, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. sure. That's uh, they're pretty key uh, when it comes to to getting to know their people, and networking. And so, um, what advice would you have for somebody that's in maybe in high school or that is, you know, currently exploring their their uh, major options? I, I would say um, you you need to be passionate about whatever career you pursue. So I I've always really loved chemistry and math. I knew I wanted to um, to do something with chemistry and math. Um, I think it's really important um, that you find, um, you know, what is it that that inspires you and motivates you. And then um, I think then you'll enjoy most of your job and your career. And I believe then you you will be ultimately successful because people who love what they do and are passionate about what they do, they always do well what type of individual would be successful in in uh, the minerals uh, process? I think um, um, as most engineering, um, somebody who likes to solve problems, um, somebody who likes challenges, um, somebody who enjoys uh, a very uh, variety in their work, because as, as we already discussed, every, every day is a little bit different. Next week, I could be working on a completely different problem. So somebody who enjoys the challenge of, of, of change. Um, and then I, I think it's really important that engineers um, work well with people. So somebody who you know, is able to, to um, hear and listen and, and then also facilitate, um, that's, a, that's also an important skill for an, for an engineer and, I, and, and will allow them to be very successful. Mm-hmm, for sure. And uh, one last question, which is, uh, you know, kind of obviously right now we're living in a very unpre- unprecedented time. Um, but uh, where on a person, like, where do you see the minerals, uh, mineral industry headed in the next couple of years? Well, I think um, there's a saying, if it can't be grown, it has to be mined. And um, what's exciting um, you know, you know, it's all the technology, technological advancements, right? So we have, for example, Tesla is doing really well. He's going to need a lot of lithium for all his batteries. Um, so there's there's a ton of opportunity to be part of that value chain um, that lead to all of the products that that people use. And so I think um, the mining industry is a is a, is a solid. It's an it's a it's an old established industry, but as a solid industry. It's only going to have more opportunities um, and more challenges as we, ha- you know, learn to be even more efficient and more responsible with how we extract and and mine um, in our industry. Absolutely, for sure. Well, Ronald, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate you being here and uh, being able to answer some of the questions. Um, so, thank you so much. Mm-hmm.